three school district 622 to order um, please rise for the pledge of allegiance All right, next we have the approval of the, of the agenda. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? So moved. Okay, moved by Livingston. Second. Second by Martins. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay, we have an agenda. Um, the first thing on the agenda then is the achievement awards. Um, we're gonna start with the athletics activities and fine arts student recognition. So uh, students who are being honored this evening, we've got a number of awards. Thank you all for being here. Um, if When your name is called, if you could come on up, we're going to be reading just a little bit about what your award is for. And um, Caleb Anderson, our uh, school board representative, is going to be reading off these names. And we're going to share a PowerPoint presentation at the same time. So I'll be here to help click way through it, but uh, by all means, Listen for your name. If you are here, come on up so we can clap for you and, and hear about your amazing accomplishments. So, sound good? All right. All right. Well, um, it's an honor to be here, and I'm really excited to uh, present our outstanding athletes and uh, artists that we have at our schools. So our first is Yvonne Curie. Um, <laughs> So Yvonne is a leader of our Northern Lights show choir. She earned three Best Soloist Awards against students from all over the Midwest. Two-time solo competition winner, won Best in Sight for the Region 4AA Soul and Ensemble Outstanding Honors from Spotlight Award for her performance as a lead role in the musical Little Shop of Horrors. Plus all of her performances and leadership in our Black History Month celebration, Yvonne will resume her academic and fine arts career at the College of St. Ben's this fall. All right. Up next, we have uh, Willie Coborn. <laughs> Willie secured his state meet qualification by winning both the 50 freestyle and 100 freestyle in section 4AA. Swimming. He was also named Section Swimmer of the Year by the section coaches. He competed at the Minnesota State High School League Class AA sw State Swim Meet on Friday, March 3rd, and Saturday, March 4th at the University of Minnesota. He swam in the 50-yard freestyle, his personal best of 21.35 seconds, and placed 10th. Willie's final swim as a polar, he placed 4th at the state meet in the 100-yard freestyle championship. Willie is only the second polar swimmer in our history to go under 46 seconds. Willie will resume his academic and swim career at the University of St. Thomas this fall. All right, congratulations. Well done. Congratulations, that's exciting. All right, next we have our National Scholastic Art Award winners. So uh, first we have Emmett Johnson, our 12th grader. Emmett Johnson and Kassar Williams and Owen Niache from North High School will be recognized nationally at Carnegie Hall. Come on up. Carnegie Hall. Can I explain the outfit? Oh, I asked this on the next slide actually. Um, yes, one second here. Oh yeah, go for um, it. So, there's more than 100,000 students that submit artwork to this competition and also writing. And um, our Emmett Johnson was one of the very few who were selected by some of the foremost leaders in visual and literary arts for excellence in originality, technical skill, and the emergence of a personal voice or vision. Less than 2,000 works received a national medal, which places them within the top 1% of all submissions. Wow. 
hit the next slide. Yeah, sure. Yeah, is it this button right here? All right, all right. I got a little speech. Oh, all right. If anyone wants to take a look at the board, I got a little speech for everybody. So, hello, everyone from the school board. We got some staff over here, got some students. I want to extend my sincere thanks for recognizing all of us students here today. I think it's crucial to celebrate the achievements of students, not only to honor the individuals, but also to inspire other kids. I believe this recognition ceremony is a fantastic opportunity to showcase what is possible. So thank you. All right. But let's talk about some art. I've always been drawn to, oh, we can go back to that last one there. All right. So I've always been drawn to the power of contrast. If you look at the board to your left and right, I have, ah, OK. Uh, yeah, I love to show emphasis on contrast. In this specific picture, I juxtapose the natural and the artificial realms by merging this person, which is also me, and their technology with all of the nature around them. But contrasts extend beyond art. It exists in every facet of life. So to contrast a good thing, you need a bad thing. And otherwise, there would be no good or bad. It would just be one thing. Get it? Yeah. yeah. So to contrast this honor we're receiving today, I think it's just as important to also highlight the shortcomings that are going on in our district that I have personally noticed from a student's perspective. So I'm graduating in two weeks from today. And I've noticed through my many years how different the culture of school has been, specifically in most recent years. Due to COVID, as we all know, we had to make many adjustments in order to accommodate how different everything was going on in those couple of years. And so when I came to start my senior year a couple months ago, I was very surprised by a certain policy that we had instated. And I thought we would be coming back to normal pre-COVID proceedings, but what surprised me was a new 50% grade floor that they had instated in the high schools. So for those of you in here that aren't aware, I'll give you an example. When a student doesn't complete a test, they receive a minimum score of 50%. The same applies to homework and other assignments. This means that achieving a passing grade now only requires completing 20% of the schoolwork to reach that 70% to graduate. What I found troubling about that is that instead of seeing kids every day trying to get work done or working and helping each other like they've done in all of my past 13 years, many students simply resort to using their cell phones or watching videos or movies on their Chromebooks, knowing that they will pass the class regardless of their effort. If we, as a school board, only attended 20% of our meetings, I'm sure we can imagine what might get done for our district. So while 20% might be passing for our school, I don't think it's passing for our kids' future work ethic. So I stand before you today using this platform and this honor that we've received to shed light on the students who have been affected by this policy, among several other ones. But I firmly believe that we can do better for them. 6 or 2 is a history of success. I know we will have a future of it. So thank you all for your attention. I look forward to seeing you at my graduation. All thank right. you. Everybody. Um, thank you so much again, Emmett, and congratulations. And uh, oh. thank you, uh, thank you for your leadership and uh, for sharing your experience with us. We appreciate it. Next. We have uh, Kassara Williams, one of our 11th graders, uh, who's recognized for her. One of her works here is a portrait of Jalen. And OK. OK. Thank you. Um, so Owen, I'll just read about Owen and Kassara's uh, real quickly. Let's see, do we? Actually, you want me to take you back? Yes, please. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. I, uh, I skipped part of it. Okay, bear with me one second here. I have 
Just a quick summary of uh, what they've done. I think that's the one you oh, to OK. Yeah. All right. Well, we can all appreciate um, the talent that each of these students um, has uh, showcased. Uh, Sweet Safari, uh, are one of our 12th graders, uh, if, um, she led the dance team this season with Grace. Thank you, sweet. Uh, all right. So, sweet Zespai led the dance team this season. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Um, with grace and leadership. She was involved in over 13 different clubs, sports, and activities, including trying out for theater for the first time and getting a pretty large role. She gets amazing grades and is in many AP and college in the school classes and set the bar very high for herself by applying to schools that have very high expectations. Sweet, thank you so much for your leadership and, you and hard work. For you because, oh, uh, most students here have already received their certificate, but you have not, so this oh. one is for you. Thanks, so. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you. All right, next we have Stella Wright. Stella, she cannot be here tonight. Uh, oh, you could. I am sorry, Stella. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Stella um, advanced to the top 24, which was the final round of the triple threat competition through the Hennepin Theater Trust with their Spotlight Education Program. This is already a very big deal. But it's especially exciting because, well, we've had one Tartan student advance all in our last four years. Stella is the first junior to go to this competition. So, Stella, well done. All right. All right. And we have Kyle Nielsen, our 12th grader. Come on up, Kyle. All right. Oh. Thank you, Kale. Thank you. All right. Sorry, Kyle, I'm looking for you here. Here, I can help you fill this. I think there we go, the last page. All right. So Kyle finished in the top ten worldwide for his business growth plan at the International DECA Conference this last week of April. He's our first top 10 winner in nine years. Well done, Kyle. All right, next we have Alan Pearson. Come on up. Yes, thank you. Congratulations, Alan. All right, so Alan has earned a plethora of accolades as a year-round athlete. In track, he was all-conference honorable mention in shot put and discus. In wrestling, he was all-conference, section runner-up, two-time state qualifier, and named the most valuable player, and had a 30-6 and six record. In football, he was named most valuable lineman and most valuable player. He was two times a first-team all-sub-district, a defensive most valuable player, subdistrict gray, and he made the Minnesota Vikings all-star team and has earned a University of Minnesota Duluth football scholarship. Alan has achieved all this while maintaining a 3.5 GPA. Nice. Well done. All right, next we are going to recognize one of our teachers. Yep, I'll let you go with that one first. Thank you. They're all back, are they? Uh, jump right into that one. I'll let you go with that. All right. Alexis Wolf, the math teacher at John Glenn Middle School.
is recognized as the 7th through 12th grade Mathematics Minnesota State Finalist for the 2023 Presidential Awards for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. The PAEMST is the nation's highest honor for K-12 science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and or computer science teachers. The award recognizes teachers that possess both deep content knowledge and the ability to motivate and enable students to be successful in those areas. Alexis has demonstrated these attributes at John Glenn as a teacher and building instruction leader. According to the PAE MST, finalists represent the most outstanding teachers Minnesota has to offer, and they serve as both a model and an inspiration for all of our fellow teachers. Alexis was recently formally recognized at the Minnesota Council of Teachers of Mathematics Conference and will be recognized informally during STEM Day at the Minnesota State Fair. If named a national awardee, her recognition will continue with a trip to Washington, D.C. and a $10,000 award from the National Science Foundation. Well done, Alexis Wolf. Oh, yeah. That would be great. Yes. I think it's good for a little context of like what what all happened this year. So okay, all right. Okay. So how about I introduce you? So we're going to have Peng Shua Shang is our principal who's been overseeing our development of our language immersion schools, and so um, we're going to have her just share a little bit about kind of what all is included and in, in the staff that we're recognizing this year because this was a really really important year for launching our immersion program. So I'll let you say a few words all about right. that. All right, thank you for having us tonight. So as you all know, our dual language immersion program started this fall in three languages, in Hmong, in Mandarin, and in Spanish. And, um, and so a lot of work went in, into that. So I think like we see our teachers in the classroom, but we also have teams of curriculum writers, as well as the help of all of our administrators in the buildings to really make all, you know, all of the immersion run as smoothly as it has this whole year. So it's been a great year. Um, so I'm, I'm going to uh, just, maybe I'll introduce yep. each, each of the schools. Yep. And you can kind of see on there where each school is. Um, mm -hmm. This is just a chart of the enrollment that we have um, currently in our schools and what's projected for next year. So as you see, each year it'll grow. Um, so first off, we'll start with Hmong Dual Language Immersion. Uh, started this year in, at Richardson Elementary. And I'll start by introducing uh, Stacy Moore, who is our teacher. All right. Come on up, Stacey. Come on up. We have a little certificate for you, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on up. We'll keep All right. If, if the immersion staff, if you guys could just stand up and we'll just grab a picture with you guys. You can just stand right over here and we'll just. Thank you, Stacey. And then along with that, we started curriculum writing actually in 2021, uh, 2022. So we've had the we've been really lucky to have the same group of curriculum writers throughout. Um, so Ch Stacy was also on that curriculum writing team and Cheng could not be here tonight, but Song Lore was one of our other Hmong curriculum writers. Um, yes. And then our principal this year is Melissa Hood. And I know Sai could not be here, but Sai Tao is our associate administrator at um, Richardson. And then along with that, uh, we at Justice Allen Page, we have the Mandarin Immersion Program. And our teacher at our Mandarin Immersion Program is Jing Tao Wang. Jing Tao, if you can just wave. Um, and our one of our curriculum writers is here, but um, Chia Ying Lin is one of our curriculum writers. We also have Jane Pan, who's actually in our district as a speech pathologist, is another one of our curriculum writers. And Zhu Ying Kavichrud is another one. Um, and our principal there led this year is Heidi George um, with our assistant principal, Daria, who could not be here. Yes. Oh, wow. All right, and then on to our Spanish dual language immersion. We were blown away. We actually were expecting one class of Spanish. We ended up with two classes of kindergarten this year. Um, so our teachers, Ana Molinos. Yep, Ana Molinos. If Ana, if you want to just wave. 
Um, and then Kit, Kitsali Salaste Hernandez. Yes. And then our, our Spanish has a little bit of a smaller curriculum writing team, but Malika Benachor, who, who has been, I mean, just instrumental. She's been doing it all, actually. And Kit Sally has been um, helping us this year. And led by our principal there, um, Bridget Bruner. Yay. And our dean is Deanna Wutella. All right. I have to stay up here for a moment. <laughs> While we have everyone up here, I'm also going to acknowledge the leadership of Peng Jua Shong, who has led this fearless team. Some of you may recall Peng Jua as our previous Weaver principal. Um, but for the last couple of years, she's been overseeing the development of our immersion school programs. And I got to tell you, long before she was our Weaver principal, she was an immersion expert in St. Paul schools and so really helped develop a lot of the programs there. So we were so grateful and fortunate to have Peng Jua leading us in our development. And I got to tell you, we have had folks from districts all over the place contacting her because they're finding out about the amazing and thoughtful work that has gone into the development of these new programs. And I'll tell you because many places start these types of programs and it, they kind of learn as they're going. But we've had such expertise in the involvement from the very beginning that we have really developed an amazing program and it's super exciting. We're so grateful to all of you and grateful to Peng Jua. So if you could just stand together, we'll just get a little group photo here with the immersion team together. Because you guys have worked really hard to make this all happen. Yay! And this is the very first ever. <laughs> Thank you all so much for the leadership. It's been such a joy working with all of you. We're so proud of everything you've accomplished. And then we'll save our two student board rep ones for a little bit further down. Did we get all of our? Yeah. Yep. Thank you, everybody. All right, congratulations again, everyone, and thanks for all of your work in the district, and thanks, Caleb, for presenting. Um, next on our agenda, we have public comment, and this is an opportunity for the public to comment on items. The speaker shall complete a registration card, state their name and address, and have between two and four minutes to speak on a topic. The public comment section of the meeting shall last no longer than 30 minutes. And I have um, a number of public comments. Um, the first one I have here, if you could step to the podium and state your name and address, and then again, two to four minutes. And I think May is going to help us keep track of time. Okay. So Lynn, I think it's Sodder, maybe? Solar. My name is Lynn Stoller, and my address is 3515 Amber Crombie Lane, Stillwater, Minnesota. And I am here um, reminding the board of what the healthcare offices do daily for our students. Um, the pandemic is finally coming to an end, um, but the health office careers have been forever changed. Um, we are finding ourselves the first line of healthcare for many of our families. The healthcare system is overwhelmed with appointments and stuff. So they come to the healthcare nurses to see if their kids are sick enough to go to the doctor. Do I send them? Do I not? Oh, sorry. Do I send them or do I not send them to school? Um, they look to us to see, is it broken? Is it not broken? Um, should I take them in? So we are constantly seeing these kids, helping our families, um, make those choices, advising them when they can't. Um, when they can't get in, we also call the clinics and say, hey, I have a student. They really need to get in to see you. Can you fit them in? We've had really good luck with that. We've been able to fit them in within a day or two instead of, instead of them waiting four or five days. Um, our enrollment here in 622 
is, is high. Um, we have three new schools with almost 800 or above 800 students. I work at Justice Allen Page. We have over 800 students. I'm a team of three nurses in that. I usually work with middle, um, multiple needs students. I do feeding tubes. I do catheter care. I do after surgery care for these fragile kids. And because of the health nurses, they are able to come to school and learn daily. Um, I also work with the general population. When the other nurse is overwhelmed, I jump in and we work as a team. And we see over, Justin Allen Page alone sees over 75 a day. We have other schools that see up to 120 a day. And to put that in kind of perspective, you know, a busy doctor's office day, they see 40 patients a day. So we're seeing a ton of kids and taking care of them. Um, we are becoming the first line of medical professionals. Um, unfortunately, many of the healthcare nurses are struggling. We're struggling with good access to our own healthcare. Um, I have looked into covering my own family and can't afford it. I would literally go home with $200 a paycheck and that doesn't pay the other bills for me. Our wages are not keeping up with inflation, which is sending a lot of nurses out of school health. And that makes me really sad. We have lost a lot of good nurses to clinics and hospitals that can pay more and um, they have year-round work. We are lucky here. A lot of our positions can go year-round. I am personally working all year um, and doing Ingle Point Summer School and AC nursing. Because we have nurses in AC, we have diabetic kids that can come to school and they can get care during the summer. If the nurses weren't there, they would not be able to have that as families and support our families as much. Um, we need to see an increase in pay. We need to see better health insurance. There's other bargaining units that has better health insurance. And I think it's time that we take care of our own healthcare nurses and get them up there. If we can hire nurses for District 62, right now we have over seven agency nurses working for us. And I'm very grateful for them because they have filled seven positions in our schools and have taken care of our kids greatly. If they would be 622 employees and be able to come back every year and keep that consistency for our families and for our students, it would help tremendously with um, the corroboration in schools. If it doesn't start over every year for every school, it's a learning process, it's a growing process. And if we could keep our nurses there year after year, we would be able to support our families much better. In order to do that, we need a commitment from the board and um, to show us that we, we can improve some of the working conditions and hire very qualified nurses that would stay with the district for a long time to come. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lynn. Um, Next speaker we have is Molly Lutz. Good evening, school board, Superintendent Osario, student leaders. My name is Molly Lutz and I have been an education assistant, also known as an EA, for the past seven years in this district. I am here tonight to let you know the importance of an EA as we get, go forward and negotiate a contract. And just as a reminder, I got a text today about five o'clock. Today is World Education Support Personnel Day. So I thought that was a, a really good thing to speak tonight. So teachers teach, bus drivers drive, custodians maintain our schools. Education assistants perhaps have the most diverse role of any function within a high performing school. We do tasks that make education possible. From the copy room where we prepare materials for teachers, the media center where we are the librarians, to the classroom where we support teachers, and during wit time where we support student academic needs. With all the different EA positions in this district, tonight I'll focus on intervention EAs. We are required to provide grade level intervention for six different grade levels both for general education and special education 
students, including students with behavioral issues and learning disabilities. This means that an intervention EA is performing the same duties as a licensed intervention teacher. But EAs have sometimes have longer hours. Um, I can use an example at Carver. I'm not sure what each school does. But we have longer hours, so we continue to at, um, have additional academic support. And this is an example of our day. And responsibilities, you can look at, the list is long. I'm, I did not put it on here to read. Um, but in addition, we assist students with reading and math skills by use of oral reading, flashcards, and related instructional reinforcement activities. We conduct tests and informal quizzes to assess students' mastering and material that was being taught. We monitor student progression. We prepare and copy worksheets and learning materials. We work with other students on skills assigned by this classroom teacher. And also on our job description, other related duties as assigned. That's a very broad job description. As of yesterday, there are positions in, at 622 that have been unfilled since the beginning of the 2022-23 school year. Why? This might give you some e insight. The starting pay in this district is $15.36. Our paraeducators, our monitors, make $18.25 an hour with less um, requirements for employment. And they are just as important as we are. And special education paraeducators, they start at $21.50 an hour. Our district currently has seven EA positions and 13 para positions open. Just to give you hindsight at a pay discrepancy, South Washington County Schools, which is two blocks from Carver Elementary, starts um, professional, we, they call them skilled support professionals. They don't have EAs in that district. At $19.63 plus 50 cents for highly qualified staff members. We deserve to be compensated for the incredible work that all of our EAs are doing. EAs have a direct impact on a child's academic growth, which increases test scores and helps to close the achievement gap. I am sure you agree that we deserve to be fairly compensated. As we enter into our contract negotiations, I invite you to, no, I challenge you, to come spend some time with an EA and ask yourself if you would do this job for $15 an hour. 622 must make it a priority to retain and recruit for the future of our academics and our students. We love our jobs, and that's why we do it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Molly. Uh, next is Dawn. This is my first goal. Um, good evening, board members. I live at 1892 McKnight Road in Maplewood, Minnesota. Tonight, I would like to speak to you about the proposed health package offered to our group of employees. As a member of the EA, or Educational Assistant Contract, I would like to point out the unfairness between the employee groups with regards to the table on page eight of this proposed pamphlet. It is proposed that $62.36 of district contribution will be added to all the HSA accounts except for the employees under the educational assistant contract. I would also like to point out on, this, on page 10 of the same pamphlet that educational assistant pays the most for healthcare across the board when comparing the cost of other groups who work in this district. Why is this? Why is our group of employees left wanting? Do we not also provide this district with important work within the community? For the next few minutes, please listen as I try to highlight some of the important work the educational assistant does for the district. We do the same interventions as our licensed teachers in our schools, but for less pay. Educational assistants assist the teachers with benchmark testing in both reading and math. Once the data has been collected from testing, the EA then collaborates with other teachers, assistant principals, and principals at our school site. We use this data meeting time to form WIN groups, which stands for what I need, for students identified with either a reading or math need. Once each EA has been given a group, usually it's K through five for us in the elementary level, we begin the task of helping those identified students close the gaps in reading or math. An EA preps daily for these groups of intervention. 
Um, and EA attends trainings every fall to better prepare us on how to do the intervention with fidelity. We see our students five times a week for 30 minutes each day. We keep our lead intervention teachers informed on student progress or ask for helpful tools or tricks to better enhance their learning. We benchmark tests fall, winter, and spring, and each time the education assistance collaborates with teachers and administrators to better assist their needs. An EA will also have other assigned duties when win time is over for the day. Maybe it's a small group working on math or reading or classroom support or anything else that is needed by our principal at our school site. This is only a snapshot of our work. EAs also build community with their students. And let's not forget the students assigned to our groups that have reading or math needs that add the additional challenge because of behavior too. In closing, educational assistance provide an important role both in the school and in this district. It is time that the board members see, hear, validate, and affirm this group of district employees by reviewing the health care benefits currently seem unfair to our group when you compare it to the other employees working in this district too. Educational assistants do valuable work in this community. We serve our schools and the students within them. It's about time our board elected officials propose benefits that are fair and inclusive for all employees. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Dawn. Um, next is Melissa. Hello, thank you for having me here today. My name is Melissa Reese. Um, oh, my name is Melissa Reese. Um, are we supposed to say our address? Yeah. I don't know why. 1276 Oak Crest Avenue, Roseville, Minnesota. Um, I've been with the district for five years. I work at Cowern. I love it. I used to work at North, but I went to the little kids. Um, so thank you for having me. Uh, health is wealth. If the kids are not healthy, they cannot learn. If they cannot learn, they're at a disadvantage that will remain with them throughout their life. Nurses play a key role in keeping the student body, the student body healthy, both physically and mentally. We manage many medical conditions that allow students to remain in school. We teach them self-care, emotion regulation, and how to manage their conditions or diseases to their best of their ability so that they can grow into their best selves. If we were not here, the census for the district would go exponentially down, as would funding. The medical concerns are only getting more complicated and require a greater level of care and monitoring. It would be in the best interest of the students, the district, and the nurses to provide affordable health insurance to the nurses who provide health services for the students of ISD 622. Affordable health insurance will allow the district to attract and hire nurses to fill the eight vacancies that we currently have. Using pool nurses should be used in an emergency, not to be used as a crutch long term or in lieu of providing affordable health care to the district health office nurses. We, the pool, with the pool nurses coming and going, I do appreciate them, they're helping us, we need it, but continuity of care for the students is disrupted. We need hired nurses so that they can establish a trusted relationship with the students to aid in providing continuity of care. We were just asked to fill out a survey and one of the questions referred to best practices. That term is quite often used in nursing. Best practice is a standard or set of guidelines that is known to produce good outcomes if followed. Best practice is not followed with regards to the district health insurance benefits offered to some of the staff. The cost is disproportionately low for people who could afford higher education and higher for people who were unable to go to a four-year college. This is a form of classism. Whether it is intentional or not, doesn't matter. I am a proud ISD 622 employee, but I'm very disappointed in the district for allowing this to happen for so long. Excuse me. If it is a matter of the amount of money that is allotted to the group, then I respectfully request 
the school board to consider an allotment review. Everyone, everyone should have affordable health care. Not just certain groups or classes of people. It is so expensive that most nurses can't afford the district insurance and have to apply for government services. So in turn, the taxpayer dollars are subsidizing the district. For us that have district health insurance, if we're lucky enough or choose to, our spouses, our partners, they're subsidizing the district. Yes, we work 10 months full time, but so do clerical 10 months. They pay $778 for family insurance a month compared to our $1,538 for family insurance. That is almost twice as much. Why is the district contributing more for their health care benefits? Are they more valued? Are they more respected? Are their health needs greater than ours? Really, it doesn't matter. We are all human. We all deserve affordable health insurance. Health office nurses provide health services. I've been a nurse for over 20 years, and I find it really ironic and disheartening that we are paying twice as much as clerical 10 month employees and three times more that for health insurance compared to other district employees like teachers. I whole, wholeheartedly feel that ISD 622 can and should do better. Thank you for your time and consideration. All right, thank you, Melissa. Um, next is Kira. Hi, I'm Kira Longfellow. I'm a resident of Oakdale. I live on um, 3690 Hamlet Avenue North in Oakdale. Um, I've actually lived in Oakdale since I was seven years old. Um, I went to Eagle Point. I went to Maplewood Middle. I'm a graduate of Tartan High School. My daughter is also a student currently in the district, um, and that's partially how I ended up being an employee in the district. Um, my daughter had such an amazing experience at Eagle Point and in the AC program. I was so impressed with all the staff that I ran into that it made me realize during the pandemic that I needed to make a career change to do something that made a difference every day where I could go home knowing that I helped somebody. So in that regard, this job has been tremendous for me. I'm an education assistant at Beaver Lake and I love the staff there. I love the families there. I love the students. Um, to be frank, the only thing that I'm not super thrilled about right now is my pay. Um, honestly, I, I took a huge pay cut knowingly going into this position and I don't regret my decision one bit. But as I just research what some of the surrounding districts um, pay people of similar positions, we end up towards the bottom of the list. I also know that with recent changes in COVID and just restructuring of schools, that our role continues to grow, which I'm fine with. But I think from a compensation perspective, our wage should go up as well. Um, I work with a great para every single day, and she makes $4 more per hour than I do. Um, I'm a college graduate. Um, I was Phi Beta Kappa, and I know that the students are lucky to have me, and I'm lucky to have them. Um, I would like to stay with 622 until I'm ready to retire. So please, you know, increase how much we make, because um, I would love for that to be stimulus for me to continue on. The only way that I'm able to make it right now is one, I, I'm lucky enough to be married to a husband that has a good job with a company he's worked for for over 20 years. Um, and it's also because I also maintain a second job. And I think if we were to pull many of the ed assistants in the district, they don't have just one job. They most likely have two jobs and that is just to get by. Um, but being able to attend tonight means a lot. Thank you for giving us a chance to talk to you. Um, to just see the great accomplishments of some of our students who are getting close to graduating is inspiring. To learn more about some of the other units and what their experience is is helpful. 
Um, I am 622 proud, and I'm sure as we go into these next contract negotiations, um, we'll all be happier with our next contract than we are with the current one. Thank you. All right, thanks, Kira. Um, we have one last speaker. Actually, can't read this. It's Kate. Connie, okay. Hi, my name is Connie and I'm the school nurse at Richardson Elementary. I live at 125 Skillman Avenue East in Maplewood. I have been a nurse for 40 plus years, but this is only my second year as a school nurse. I had absolutely no idea what being a school nurse would entail until I was into this job. It's a constant day-to-day -day learning, many struggles, and constant training. As a school nurse, I am responsible for about 560 kids by myself. I have no medical trained backup. I have no medical staff at my school. I will often see 60 plus kids a day, which can be two to three times what an MD will see in their office during a day. Because of this, I have not been able to take breaks during the day for a breath or just a moment away. However, I still get that break deducted and only get paid for six and a half hours instead of seven. I have kids coming in from 920 to four, which means I also have to eat my lunch in between kids, which can take hours. This is a constant battle, never knowing who and when a student will come in. I have been called to run to the playground, the basement, cafeteria, and other classrooms for emergencies. 911 has been called many times. I also have two diabetic kids in my school, a second grader and a pre-K, and the pre-K is on the other end of the world, um, who need constant monitoring as they are not always under control with their numbers and meds. This can be very challenging while also seeing all the other kids and meeting their needs. I have so many kids with mental health needs that will stop by just to say hi, get a hug, or want to chat. While I love chatting with these kids, I don't have time to spend with them due to my lack of resources. We need additional help for these kids now. Starting an elementary school is the key for so many kids to develop skills for later in life. Sharing some money from the budget surplus would be a huge investment in our kids. Until you actually work in a school setting, you have no idea what these kids and staff go through on a daily basis. I'm also challenged by non-medical staff in my building. I have staff that will call parents despite me telling them that their kids are fine and are okay to stay in school. This lack of communication on their part undermines me as a medical professional and shows a lack of respect for my nursing judgment. I have been questioned in front of students, which sets a poor example of trust for the kids I care for. I have been told how to do my job and what kids need by non-medical staff. I would never dream of doing that to anyone else. I also have challenges from parents. I've been yelled at over the phone, in person, and when calling them about their child who is sick. They're either too busy or at work and can't come get their child. Oftentimes I will have kids in my office for more than an hour just waiting for parents. I get that our lives are busy, but they have to trust me when I'm calling about a sick child. So many times I'm not able to reach someone to come get their child. This is beyond frustrating for me and for the student. With that being said, please know that I do love my job as a school nurse. These kids have my heart and making sure they are safe and heard is my top priority. I do not do this job for the money, trust me. I love the staff I work with and we are a true community. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on the nurse's behalf and we look forward to working on solutions. All right, thank you, Connie. And I noticed that all of the speakers indicated that they did want somebody to follow up with them. So May will hand that over to Christine and Christine. Actually, will have if I could just add to that too, thank you for everybody who brought your um, comments this evening as well. One, uh, one thing we're gonna talk about too is that with negotiations, we do need to work through the elected negotiation team from your bargaining group. So we, when it comes to conversations or, or public comment related to collective bargaining, 
that follow-up will take place at the bargaining table. Um, but I do want to let you know that um, certainly everybody who will be at the bargaining table, and our, our HR director is unable to be here this evening, but um, she is going to watch public comment. She'll watch the recording of it so she can hear what we're saying as well. And so we'll make sure that anybody who will be a part of that process will hear your comments this evening as well. So thank you for being here to share that. So that would be the one example where we're going to, we have to do that at the bargaining table, but, but please know we're listening, okay? All right, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to come and speak and thanks for everything you do each day at school. Uh, okay, next on our agenda, we have the consent agenda. So the consent agenda consists of routine items that are acted on in a single consolidated motion without board discussion. Board members have the option of pulling off consent agenda items if they wish to discuss them individually. So tonight on the consent agenda, we have minutes of the April 18th business meeting, routine personnel, bid awards, bid calendar, change orders, disbursements, curriculum purchases for a math curriculum and ELA digital supplement. Do any board members want to pull anything from the consent agenda? Um, if not, can I get a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Okay, moved by Livingston. Second. Second by Peltzman. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed nay. So that is approved as well. Um, next, we have our reports, and we're going to start out with our student school board. It's my last time I struggle with the mic. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. It's really nice to see you all. Um, I, hope, I hope you guys had a great start to your week in May. And I'm excited to start my last school board report of the year. Um, I'm officially done with school at the U. I only have one more class for the rest of the year, and I'm super excited to be finished June 2nd. And last week I turned 18, and I just want to say I'm super excited for graduation. It is approaching. <laughs> so AP testing, I'm going to do a little shorter because I do have a slideshow to show you guys. Uh, but AP testing has ended, I believe, and I heard the hardest test was the AP physics test. Um, the majority of seniors have committed to their college, like I said last time. Um, so if you're interested in learning where Tarn seniors are headed, you can go to the seniors page on Instagram. The account is run by students, but it's really excited to see where everyone is headed. World Cafe was today. I got there a little late, but I saw a lot of student engagement, and I think a lot of student voices were heard today. Relay has continued to fundraise money for cancer. So far, they have raised around $34,000. They have three days left. On Friday, they have their overnight camp out, and we hope they reach their $75,000 goal. Tartan Theater showcased Mean Girls, and I heard it was a really big hit. Uh, I was busy with finals and I couldn't attend, but Julia went and she said it was really fun and really good. Uh, so thank you all again for supporting the, ooh, the Avid Hedges Pizza fundraising. I personally fundraised a little over $700, but I know a girl that fundraised like 2000 so I know we did a big impact. So I appreciate this support. Tomorrow there will be a boys tennis match varsity baseball game, girls lacrosse game, and many more matches. We're wishing lots of luck with their game. games. We are arriving towards the end of the trimester, so I recommend students to think about deadlines and retakes. I don't want to think about the end of the year. <laughs> Overall, everything is good. A lot of important dates are coming up for seniors, so please keep an eye out for that. Avid Senior Banquet is May 22nd on Monday. Cap Cap and gown distribution is June 1st, senior all night party June 2nd, and graduation June 7th. Uh, lastly, I just want to, I'm going to move that I've never done before, so this is so exciting to do it my last time. <laughs> okay, one second. As Stephanie's heading over there, let's just do a reminder. Once we hear both of our student board rep reports, we're going to want to get a photo of the For board. For sure, that's why guys. I like glammed up today. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, <laughs> so Julia emailed us last week and was like, what should we do for, well, she was like, I have an idea for your last school board report. And she, she said, why don't you survey all of the students from the high school and see where everyone is headed, what their plans are and everything. So that is what I did. I know we can get this information from counselors, but hearing it from students is just more heartfelt. So next slide. Um, so I asked students, we got 54 responses, which is, I feel like it's a pretty good, pretty good for seniors. 68.5% uh, <laughs> of seniors are headed of the 54 to a four-year university. 18.5% are headed to a two-year college. Some are headed to trade school. Some are taking a gap year. You can see someone's, someone's going a year at Century and transferring out. Someone's going to aviation school. And then again, another gap year. Next slide. So the biggest, the biggest schools that we see, or I saw on the survey, um, five out of 54 students are going to Augsburg University. Eight out of 54 are going to the U of M, Twin Cities. Nine out of 54 are going to Century College. So just wanted to highlight that. And this is like a really cool slide. I really liked it. Are you going, are you saying in state or out of state? And out of state, they, I guess they considered the Wisconsin being, Wisconsin being out of state, which it is, which it is, but like it's close. So I just, I feel like it's not out of state. <laughs> Technically, I mean, we live like 10 minutes out, so 66.7% are staying in state and 25.9% are going out of state and 7.4% are just not going to college. And I'm not going to read these all, but um, we can share these slides to you guys if you guys are interested. I asked, how did career pathways counselors and or AVID help make you make your help you make your decision? And I'll highlight some of them. Career Pathway helped me so much. Ms. McLean was amazing with getting close to me and understanding what would be good. She was, was just so good at everything she does. And there's some students that just, they didn't help them at all, which is okay. Um, student, a student said, Avid pushed me towards my major by giving me all the best resources to help choose my major. So yeah, just highlighting a few of those. What is something you would tell your freshman self? I feel like this was the second most fun question. And a lot of them are really funny. They said, do research and join summer programs. You'll be fine. For every five bad moments, there's one good one. And it goes by really fast. <laughs> and, hmm, oh, this one's good. Take more photos because without them, all you have is your memories. All right, next slide. This is my favorite one. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Grad school, family doctor, school anesthesiologist, rich with my own house. <laughs> in New York, being successful. <laughs> and yeah, rich AF with or without my degree. <laughs> okay, that is all. Oh, um, thank you all. I guess I'm just gonna end it here, but thank you all for these past two years. I can't believe it's two years ago that we kind of met on over Zoom. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you guys for everything, for listening to my stutters, for listening to me just pausing and laughing and, you know, reacting to everything. Um, you guys have all been great and I have nothing to complain about. So you guys, thank you guys for highlighting, being a highlight of, of these past two years. And I'm kind of sad to leave, but I know we are leaving two good sophomores at your hands. <laughs> I thought this was the last time. Okay, I got it finally, first time not struggling to get it. But my presentation won't be as glamorous as Stephanie's because I could not figure out how to do a survey. I just, I couldn't figure out, you know, I know I'm Gen Z, I can do everything, but I, I couldn't do that. Um, but we did have like a student survey that one of the assistant principals put out, but I asked for the information and he didn't give it to me. So I kind of just like 
took it upon myself. I like, there's a few people who have like told me where they're going, so I have that. But I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to come here and be like for, to talk for my school and all that stuff because it's been such a good opportunity to do. And you guys, you guys mean so much to me. <laughs> and it's been a really fun time here. And so thank you so much. Um, so to start off on how I'm doing, I'm doing really well. I am finishing or sort of finishing two weeks left, I guess, of regular school and my 916 um, course at Century, which I'm finishing my phlebotomy class, which is really exciting, but I have to take like a state test, which is like 150 questions about like, um, what kind of tubes do you need and that I don't know that. So I really need to study for that for sure. Um, <laughs> but I am really excited for that. And I had to do, we had to do 30 pokes or like draw 30 times. It doesn't have to be 30 people, but poke 30 times. And I did my dad today. And so he's like built. So, it's, and he has a lot of tattoos, so you can't like see the veins kind of cause like it, it just covers everything. And his veins are like mine, they're like itty bitty. So you can't find them at all. So I was struggling today and my teacher was like trying to like find it too and we could not, but we did it. I poked him twice cause you could do two, you could do a person twice and I was successful both times. And he said I did better than the people at the clinic. So I'm like, <laughs> yay. So shout out to my teacher for helping me do that. Um, so that was really fun. I'm like halfway through with my pokes. So I still have a little bit to go. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have stuff. I feel like you keep looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come volunteer, I would be glad to poke you. I'm really good. I won't, I won't, nothing will happen to you. So, <laughs> um, so that's really fun. Otherwise, I am really excited to go to U of A, University of Arizona next year. So I will be in heat, which was my goal, because um, I'm tired of the winter and the cold. And I just, um, why I was in here last time is because I was getting on a plane back from Arizona and it was so much fun being out there. And like my, I was like with my aunts most of the time, which was amazing. But the only like downfall is I got heat rash. Yeah, so <laughs> hopefully while I'm going out school out there, I won't get that. But if I do, I'll know how to like deal with it basically, yeah. And also, thank you thank for this. You. It's so, it's so cute. It has little candy in it. <laughs> you guys can see, but it's really cute. So thank you. They're really cute. I'm gonna like put this on my shelf in my bedroom. <laughs> um, so for the senior statistics that Stephanie did, but that was glamorous. Um, a lot of the students at my school are either going to the U of M, Concordia, or St. Thomas. So I feel like a lot of people are staying in Minnesota. But there are some who are going to like, for me, Arizona or um, yeah, Wisconsin or Colorado or Kansas. Like some, there's a good handful of people who are going out of state, but then there's also, it's like 50-50, I feel like. I haven't heard um, many people not going, but if they did, they said they were taking like a gap year. So they do plan on going back, just not right away, which I still feel like that's good because you don't have to go right away if you don't want to. It's nice to have a little break. Um, so, and then for academics, sorry if I'm like reading, I just wanna make sure I get all the information right. So there was a Minnesota High School League art competition this month at North that they all did really well and seven students received excellent ratings and nine students received superior ratings. And um, just to talk about like counselors and like college prep like she also did, um, I feel like counselors helped a lot a lot like this year, especially for me, because I know um, at the beginning of the year, I talked to Miss Stanley, I'm pretty sure that's her name. She um, helps with like college prep basically, but you just go like to meet with her instead of going to like an after school thing. So she helps you like give you like a spreadsheet of like, like to like help you map out what you want to do, even if you don't know specifically, just to like put down some names of schools and like research about it or like give you certain like websites that will help you like find colleges that are best for what your major is. So she did really good with helping with that and like going and making like win times for college help and like taking seniors on um, like tours or even juniors taking them on tours to colleges. So I think she did really good with that, like preparing people for college and then also with AVID, 
being an avid since like seventh grade, I feel like has like helped me so much and I love my little avid family. Um, they, I feel like it's more than just like a regular class. It's like, I feel like it's like somewhere you go to like hang out with your friends, I feel like, rather than like, yeah, and work. <laughs> Don't get that wrong, we do work, but it's like, it's not like you need to sit down, listen to a lecture, like take notes and all that stuff, but it's more like fun and relaxed. And I love my teacher, Mr. Pisky. He was so, he's like such an amazing teacher. He's like, he just makes everybody feel like comfortable there. So I feel like also that really helps like having the right teacher. But I feel like everybody just grows together there. So I love my AVID family. I want to highlight, me and Tierra started an AVID together. Yeah. So when we were in, in Maplewood, our seventh and eighth grade years, we spent together as an AVID family. And mm -hmm. because Maplewood splits, we split apart. But AVID stays strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, like, like taking it all the way back to like sixth grade, what was it, like six years ago? That was a long time ago. But I think it was the, the first time I had to like do like an interview for something. They had like, felt like six people, but it probably wasn't because I was little. <laughs> um, but I think it was like four people or three people that were there that was like interviewing you to become into AVID. So that was a little scary for my teeny tiny little self. So, <laughs> but I feel like that also like, even though you're little, maybe people don't remember it, but I'm pretty sure they do. <laughs> um, that also helps you for like now if people are applying for college. It's like at least they got to experience that in some way, even though it's not related to a job. It like still like gives them a feeling of what an, like going into an interview what it would feel like. Because I know I was really nervous <laughs> going into that. So that did help me um, knowing what I'm going to go into like for jobs and all that stuff. Um, for extracurriculars, I'm so excited for prom this weekend. I feel like our school is like the school that has the, at the latest time. I'm like, it needs to come faster. But also, I've been really like last minute with myself. Like my dress is supposed to come in the mail today. So let's, 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 hope, let's hope it comes today. Um, otherwise, I have everything else. Um, getting my nails done on Thursday. Everybody's like, are you going to have someone do your makeup in here? I'm like, no, that's expensive. I will do it myself. I, I'll just, I'll look just fine. <laughs> Actually, and then, you have my prom picture. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I definitely want to see. Um, um, we had our last pep rally today, which was really fun. I feel like most of our other pep rallies, they're like, they're like okay. But I feel like because it's the end of the year, everybody's like so hyped to like beef. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so everybody's like, just like have a lot of like energy when it comes to pep rallies. And they did like a, um, like a teachers versus students karaoke, and it was really really fun. It was so fun. But I did have to leave early to go do like the pokes for my dad, so I didn't get to go to the whole thing. And I know they had ice cream afterwards, so I had to take my friend. I was like, I'll take you to go get ice cream afterwards because we missed that. But so I'll take you to go get ice cream. <laughs> um, and then our school hosted their first annual pop. Um, it's like a prom at our pace, that's what it stands for, which is put on by the North Center Base Special Education Team with some special guests like Miss Minnesota and Princess of America. I have a video that I didn't send it, I can send it to either you or you, if you guys wanna see, I feel like you guys should see, it's really cute. I'll send it real quick. Um, we, we actually have it. Oh, you have it? Ready to send to the board as well. Oh. We just got it as well, but okay. Yep. yep. Great. Well, I, I looked at it today. I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. Mm -hmm. so I feel like I had to share it, but you guys have it. So, <laughs> um, so I think that's really great that they did that. And then important dates coming up. We have our cap and gown pickup, thirty first through the second, our last day, which is June second. And then <laughs> we have our graduation rehearsal at eleven on the eighth, which is the day after theirs. And then we have, which is also the day of my state's test for my phlebotomy class. So it's going to be a packed day. <laughs> yeah, so my, my test will be at 8 a.m. early. <laughs> and then rehearsal at 11. And then get ready. And then graduation. And then dinner at some, somewhere. Probably Applebee's because I feel like it would be late. <laughs> so busy day. And then we also have our senior all-night party. Um, the 8th, that's going to be at the Borough in Oakdale, 
which I haven't heard a lot of students going to, so I don't think I'm going to just because I thought probably will be like with my friends and family afterwards. Um, so hopefully they get enough people for that. And then for sports, the track team is doing well. They have a meet today at Matamune and then another one against Two Rivers on Thursday. I'm really hoping to make one of them because my friends play on the team. And then also our softball team ranked fifth in the Metro State Conference. Great to them. I was gonna join this year, but then I feel like it'd just be like another thing on to like all the stuff I already have to do. So I was like, maybe not. <laughs> and plus I haven't played in like four years. So I'm like, I'd be a little rusty. So maybe not. Otherwise, um, our school overall, um, students are just really excited for the last day, especially seniors. I think we're just excited to start something new and go to college and experience all that. And then, but I know we'll have a mix of emotions. I'm not planning on crying, but I probably will. <laughs> so I'm like, if anybody sees me, like, don't look at me. <laughs> and then we still have, yeah, <laughs> we still have our senior week for dress up, which they're not yet saying what it'll be, but they had a survey of like different things that it would be. It'd be like to dress up like Adam Sandler, so just wear like big clothes, so I'll just <laughs> wear my dad's stuff. <laughs> and then they have um, like, I think it's like soccer moms versus barbecue dads. So do that. And then I think there's some other things like I'll like, like match with like a trio or stuff like that. So we all got to vote. And then also today we had our second annual service day which was really fun. So you would go either go out into the community and volunteer. Some people went to like the nursing home or they went to um, pick up trash in the city or went to like a garden to help them. Or some students stayed at school, which I did. Um, and we rolled um, like socks for homeless people and added like a little card in there. And then we also like packed food for homeless people and then made tie blankets for shelters. So I feel like that's a really good thing that we're doing. But otherwise, that's all for my last, my last report. So thank you guys so much. I enjoyed it a lot. So thank you. If you guys want to come up, we can all go down and we've got some certificates for you as well and a group photo time for our last time together. Well, um, so uh, school board members and um, Stephanie Rodriguez Salguero, our uh, student rep from Tartan, and also Tiara Thompson, our student rep from North. Uh, we are going to um, all congregate here in a moment uh, to get a picture and present awards. But I just wanted to say a few things. Um, I, th I think that it's, it's very evident that both Tiara and Stephanie have shown dedication to the role of student board reps the last two years. And every single time they've come, they put a lot of work into it beforehand. And they've really talked a lot about voices from all over the different student bodies. Um, and that's something that is uh, just remarkable. Um, both have very distinguished academic careers so far. And both have had a lot of leadership roles in the community and at your schools. And thank you so much for that. Um, I'm excited for both of you for your next adventures as you go on to different uh, opportunities and you continue to be leaders. And I know you will continue to really impress um, everybody that, that you interact with. Uh, so they are two of the best examples of what our communities hope for in uh, what we want our leaders to be. Stephanie and Tiara, thank you again. Um, I also want to say thank you to our school board um, student board rep liaison mentor Julia Martins because I think she has done a fantastic job of working with our reps and supporting them. Um, yes, come on up, Julia. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, and then um, I also 
I want to um, announce and welcome um, that our next two student representatives for next year and the following year, we will have uh, CC Goraki for North and then also Kaden Ikerike for, for uh, Tartan. So uh, thank you again, Tira and Stephanie. Thank you for your energy and your dedication. And I think I speak for everyone. You guys make us feel young. <laughs> and so I loved your stories and your, um, oh, I feel like I'm yelling already. No. Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for your dedication and showing up and getting the info from your fellow students and uh, bringing us great reports. And good luck in both of your endeavors. Thank you. If other board members want to say a couple words, feel free. These are, these yeah. are two members here. Oh, yeah. They're fun. So I, have, I always have something to say to you guys because you guys are so much fun. Thank you so much for uh, the perspective that you bring to the board. We're not in the schools all the time, and you guys are, and your uh, eyes and ears, and, and, and bringing us great reports. And like Caleb said, you guys put so much work into it. And so we appreciate all the work that you guys have done over this uh, last couple of years. And good luck at college. And I know that you guys are going to continue to make us proud of you. And we want to be able to also um, follow your progress. Please check in. Let me know so me can tell us how you guys are doing and, and all that. And, and so you know, the University of Minnesota and the University of Arizona is really gaining uh, good students. And, and uh, we're so proud of you. So thank you. squares around all your faces so things are working out well. Great. Those are keepsakes. <laughs> Okay, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, superintendent, and members of cabinet. It feels like winter was just yesterday and we're already talking about summer construction, but I'm, I'm happy to share where we are. We've been through quite the number of years with construction and want to give you and the community a little update on what they're going to be seeing this summer. So to share, we do have a few projects that are nearing the end, Eagle Point Elementary and Justice Ellen Page Elementary. Um, there's some major or some minor things that we're trying to fix here. Um, after living in the building for a year, we are going to go back and correct some acoustical issues in the STEM room and the motor room, so put up acoustical panels. Those will be happening in June before summer school starts. But the key points I want to share with you on this is we finished 17% and 18% under budget, respectively, for those projects. Mm. So a few minor things happening in the summer, but all in all, the contractors will be out of there pretty soon. Same with John Glenn Middle and Skyview Middle. Um, the good news, 6 and 9% under budget. 99.9% .9 complete on these projects as well. Again, some really minor things that we're going back and fixing. We have a separation of fire and public address systems at John Glenn. They were together and this past year found out it just really didn't work the way we needed it to work. So those are being separated. 
And then um, in June, we're also going to go back and fix some site drainage issues at Skyview Middle. So again, before summer school starts, those will be done. And our multi-site secure entries in the furniture rollout at Cowron, Gladstone, and Weaver, 20% under budget, and really just a couple more things that the contractor has to come back and fix, mainly at Gladstone with some frames around the doors. So almost done with that project. And if you haven't driven by uh, the old Oakdale Elementary site, that building has been demolished. And we are just in the process. This is, they've even been moving faster than when I created the slide. They put down dirt and have seeded the site. So they're almost ready to leave the site and it'll be restored and grass will hopefully be growing soon. Um, the two big projects that we have this summer um, are continuations uh, of projects from last year. So North High School, we're about 72% complete and tracking 8% under budget with this construction. Um, currently, the contractor is working on the classroom wing and the existing building exterior. You'll see the new panels going up around the perimeter. This summer, they're going to move to the site work, so the east parking lot, so from the main entry of North High School all the way to the back side of the District Education Center, that whole parking lot's going to be redone. And then they're going to start to focus on the existing building as well, along with the new furniture rollout. So believe it or not, we're going to be done by August of this year. So that project's going to wrap up pretty quickly. And then Tartan High School, this is our multi-year project. We'll finish in 2025. We're about 43% complete on this construction project, tracking on budget. So this was the last one we bid out of all of our um, referendum projects. And currently, they're working on the new classroom edition, as well as the gym and athletics edition. That gym and athletics edition will be ready for the fall. And this summer, we're actually going to close down the building. There won't be anybody in there. We're moving the office to Skyview Middle. So if you're looking for Tartan's uh, front office, they'll be at Skyview Middle this summer. Because essentially what we're going to do is the contractors are going to go in and demolish that center part of that building where that gymnasium is and start reworking that. Um, again, substantial completion is estimated for the fall of August 2025. And then some other smattering of projects around the district. We have Weaver Elementary. We're going to be installing window cooling units this summer, so that'll be ready for the shoulder season this fall. Um, North High School is also getting a track resurfacing project, so they're going to be out there right away in June after the track season is done working on that. Um, the dust collector in the industrial arts area is being replaced. It's due and not working anymore, so it's time to replace that. Um, the District Education Center, this was a uh, part of North High School's parking lot project. So we have that little self parking lot behind the building that is accessible from North parking lot. So that's being done as well this summer. Um, LC Webster Education Center, those are the renovations that we're doing for the special education uh, center that's going to live there after next year. Those construction projects won't start until August. So just know that you won't see any mobilization right away in June. It'll be later in the summer. And then Cowron Elementary, we're going to go back and fix the uh, interior signage. So we're putting interior signage up with Braille. So it's all code compliant. And just to note that they will also be getting air conditioning. Um, it's just going to start in the fall. What we found with Cowron is we had to upgrade the electrical systems there in order to support the air conditioning and the lead times for those electrical components is several months. So that's why that's starting in fall. Richardson, again, because we're, we've lived in the building now for a couple of years since renovations, we're going to go back and fix some drainage issues at the main entry where we had some water infiltration. And Carver Elementary, the same thing. There's some music room, existing flooring issues that are occurring that we're going to go back and fix. And the maintenance shop and transportation center, our support buildings will receive new perimeter fencing and repairs. So not as much going on as last summer, but still enough. Oh. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd be open to answering or giving any more information. Um, Sarah, thanks. I. I was wondering, uh, the window cooling unit, um, so 
is this central air in the building or, or no? It's, there, not? it's not central air yet. They're window units per classroom. Mm. And that really um, is to tide us over until the next phase of the facility oh. master plan, which we'll do in another year oh. to make the decision on where we're going to spend the money going forward. Oh, I see. Okay. Thanks. If I could just add a follow up to that question, Nancy, you might recall that um, back when we did our whole um, facilities bond referendum, we had our whole facilities master plan that was put together. You will recall that. The two schools, traditional element, uh, traditional schools that were not getting a ch dramatic change in footprint, which were Cowan and Weaver, um, we had made that commitment long ago that we were still, even though the others might have changes to the footprint happening, that Cowan and Weaver were still always going to receive uh, a secure double vestibule entrance, um, which those are both done now, which is great, and that they would also get. Um, cool down, however managed we get there, which is what Sarah was just referencing, mm -hmm. but that also they would get all the new innovative new furniture, just like all the other schools as well. So the security features, the air conditioning and all the new furniture. So even though they didn't change in footprint as a building, those three pieces have been a commitment from the very beginning and um, it's great to see them finally getting there. Uh, thanks, and just to follow up. So, and the footprint was problematic, right, because of the soil? Well, there was a study done at the time. Um, back in like 2016, we did a study of kind of all of the architecture of all the buildings, and there was a lot of studying which buildings could be, um, theoretically could be expanded or could be adjusted to kind of meet, because we looked at the study of, remember we did the whole, um, we did a study of demographics and concentration of boundaries in neighborhoods, but then also the, the student population that was gonna fit in each of these proposed sites, and then what the cost would be for complete renovation or additions or what have you. And so um, those were two sites that didn't lend themselves well to being expanded upon. Um, but at the same time, um, if you recall, Weaver at one time was really over, dramatically overcrowded. And so part of the rebound, the new boundaries was to pull some of that um, enrollment off of Weaver so that it would be right sized for the building that we had there. And so that that did happen through that whole boundary change process. So, mm -hmm. and, and just one other selfish question, I guess. Uh, so in, in LC Webster School, um, my husband Tim spent three months painting a mural there like 30 years ago. So I was just wondering, I, I mean, is it going to make, stay? It's going to stay. Oh. Good. Yep. Oh, thank you. It'll still be there. <laughs> Otherwise, I was going to run over and take pictures of it. You know. no, you're good. So, okay, thank you. <laughs>
just about every one of our other sites within the district that is not under construction. Predominantly secondary programming will be at either John Glenn, <coughs> excuse me, or Skyview this summer. A follow up question for, for Tricia. Um, are we staffed up for all these programs or? or uh, We're super close. Super close. So if you've got anyone who's interested in wanting to work this summer, oh, send them my way. But we're, we're really close. Okay. And we have record enrollment too. So it's great. I have a lot of kids are supporting. All right, anything else on summer programming? Okay, um, next we have from finance, the acknowledgement of contributions. And that's me. <laughs> Sue, okay, and Keita has that. So Minnesota Statute 123B.02 permits school boards to receive for the benefit of the district bequests, donations, or gifts for any proper purpose and apply the same to the purpose des designated. In that behalf, the board may act as a trustee of any trust created for the benefit of the district and for the benefit of pupils thereof. Therefore, the Director of Finance recommends the following resolution. Be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District number 622 that the school board accept with appreciation the following contributions and permit their use as de designated by the donors. Thomas Wafler, $5,000 to North High School. And this is the Alexandra Lovejoy Wafler Social, Social Justice Scholarship. Michael Tessa, Testa, $50 for Meals on Wheels. North St. Paul Maplewood Oakdale Rotary Club Foundation, $300 to the North High School Youth Services. And Lori Creever, in honor of longtime coach and teacher Bill Halbrutter, $50 to the North High Athletic Program. All right, thank you, Akita. Um, so that brings the total fiscal year 2022-2023 monetary contributions to $45,843.95. And I need a motion and a second to approve that. So moved. Okay, moved by Natardi, second by Anderson. Um, any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. And all opposed say nay. Um, that's approved and thank you so much to those donors. Um, next on the agenda from operations, we have the long-term facility maintenance from 916. Okay, so annually we get um, a request from Northeast Metro 916 for their filing of the long-term maintenance revenue, excuse me, for pay 24 levy, which is fiscal year 2025. And a couple items to note as you look at the package, the allocation for 916 is separate and distinct from our district's LTFM submittal, which will be happening next month. This levy does not take away from our district's allocation or amount for LTFM either. The allocation to member districts is based on 75% of a district's ADM utilization of 916 programs and 25% of the district's tax capacity. Each member district of Northeast Metropolitan Intermediate School District 916 is required annually to approve a resolution authorizing LTFM for the intermediate district. The total amount levied for 916 in pay 24 levy is $431,950 and school district 622's proportionate share of that amount is $48,324. I recommend approval. All right, thank you, Sarah. Any questions or comments? Okay, um, then I'll read, read the resolution. Be it resolved by the school board of school district 622 um, 
that we approve the Northeast Metro 916 Intermediate School District long-term facility maintenance program budget and authorize the inclusion of a proportionate share of these projects in the district for fiscal year 2025. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Martin, second by Livingston. Any discussion? Uh, this is a roll call vote, right? Um, so may please call, call the roll. Kita Yang. Aye. Caleb Anderson. Aye. Charlotte Natardi. Aye. Nancy Livingston. Aye. Dan Hilton. Aye. Julia Martins. Aye. Michelle Yenner. Aye. Okay, so that is approved. Thank you for that. Um, next we have the nine six. Next, we have the adult meal price adjustment resolution. So school nutrition programs funds may not subsidize meals served to adults or other non-program meals such as second meals. The meal price is set so that the cost of the meal is fully paid by the customer. Per USDA guidance, the minimum pricing for adult meals must be charged as follows. Breakfast, $2.85 and lunch, $5. The last meal price increase for adult breakfast was effective June 2022, so last year, and the last meal price increase for adult lunch was in August 2022. So therefore, the adult breakfast, which is currently $2.65, is proposed to go from that to $2.85, which is an increase of 20 cents, and the adult lunch, which is currently at $4.95, is proposed to go to $5, it's an increase of 5 cents. I recommend to the board that they approve the adult meal price increase per USDA guidelines. Great, thanks Sarah. Any discussion? Uh, be resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 622 that the following meal prices become effective July 1st, 2023. Adult lunch, $5 and adult breakfast, 285. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Moved by Natardi, second by Peltzman. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed, nay. Okay, that motion is approved. Uh, next we have superintendents with policy. Yes, all right. Um, as a reminder, uh, any t our school board has the, uh, what's the word? Responsibility of overseeing board policies. And um, anytime we propose a change to an existing policy or an addition of a new policy, we do three official readings of that proposed change. Um, the first typically takes place at a work study session. The second reading takes place at a business meeting. And then the third and final reading uh, takes place at another business meeting where we actually take, you as a board take action on that item. So tonight we have one policy that is in its third reading. So this is a night that we are taking action on. And this is policy 903, um, which is visitors to school district buildings and site. And this is an update of this board policy. Um, you can see all the changes that are proposed in our board packet as well. But just defines a few things a little more distinctly. Um, references, um, there's some different definitions that are included in there, um, as well as some um, different visitor limitations that are included as well to kind of keep up with uh, some changes that have happened in the district, including our visitor management system. You might recall that this is the first year, this past year was the first year we had a visitor management system where people uh, log into when they come in to visit our buildings. And so um, those references are all included in here as well. and. Um, this is, it is my recommendation that you uh, approve these changes that you have had a chance to review, um, but I'll also handle any questions that may come up as well. All right. I should just add one thing too. With any time a legislative season ends, we, through MSBA, get a lot of recommended changes to school board policies based on legal references that changed in the session. So 
Um, once we get done with this legislative session, um, we'll eventually probably get a whole list of recommended board policies for review. So um, keep that in mind that there will probably be more coming soon. All right, if there's no discussion, then be resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 622 hereby revises the following policy 903 visitors to district buildings and sites. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. You moved by Anderson? Second. Second by Martins. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay, that motion is approved. Thank you. Um, then we have for the school board, we have set the 2023-2024 school board meeting dates. So there's a list of those dates here. Um, any discussion about that? If not be resolved by the School Board of Independent S School District 622, that pursuant to policy 205 school board business meeting dates will be as follows, and there's a list of them there. And the work study session dates, school board retreat. Um, let me see. And that the regular meeting place will be the school board business for the school board business meetings will be the boardroom of the district education center at 6 p.m. with the exception of July 11th and July 9th, which will be held at 4:30 p.m. unless otherwise specified. And that the regular time for the school board's work study session will be 6 p.m. and the meeting place will be posted. And that the meeting place and time for the school board retreat shall be in the district ed center from 9 to 2 p.m. So can I get a motion and a second to approve that resolution? So moved. Okay, moved by Martins. Second. Second by Livingston. Again, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay, that is approved. Then we have to set time agenda and location for the June 6, 2023 work study session. Um, it's suggested that will include our usual check-ins, a budget overview of the funds, next step lease renewal, and demographics and summary data presentation. Um, any discussion on that? Can I get a motion and a second to approve? Okay, moved by Martins. Uh, second by Peltzman, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And all opposed say nay. Okay, that motion carries. Then we have board communication. Julia, do you want to start us off? Um, I feel like I've done a lot of stuff since the last time we were sitting behind the table. Um, I had a chance in the last couple of weeks attend both of the World Cafes at North High School in Tartan this morning. And it's really fun to be in a room with the students and hear their feedback. And, you know, sometimes they're like, they're asking me what I would want to help make the district better. Like, so it's really cool to um, be a part of those activities because I think it really helps us um, be in the schools and see what it's like. So I appreciate that opportunity with um, Christine and her team. Uh, I went to the Meet Girls play. It was really good. I think like two or three of the um, ladies in the audience were also in the play. So I was like, oh yeah, you deserve that because they were really good. So that was fun. I actually went with a former Tartan grad. And so she had not been there since she graduated in 2005. So it was very nostalgic for her. So that was kind of I was like, I'll document it for you. And she was like, no, don't. And then like, really, she wanted me to. <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, I got to part or attend and volunteer at the Eagle Point Kindergarten Choir concert last week. And that, was <laughs> it was just really fun. My little kiddo Cameron was in it. And so it was great to be a part of those activities again with COVID and not being able to have those. and or they're recorded and you get to watch them later. It was packed. There was like standing room only with parents and I feel like grandparents and cousins and aunts and uncles. So that was 
really exciting and I appreciated that. And they twisted my arms, so I will be going on the Como Zoo field trip uh, June 1st as well. So wish me luck. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had the, the pleasure of going to the uh, District Multicultural uh, event, um, I think it was last week at Tartan. Um, unfortunately, with a tiny baby, I wasn't able to stay for the entire thing, but I did stay for the um, immersion program kindergartners uh, and their songs, and it was just, it was adorable. It was really heartwarming. Uh, it was really wonderful to see, um, and, and really great to see them in, in incorporating uh, what they have learned over this first year of, of the immersion program. So um, I look forward to attending that again in the future, and I encourage everyone else to. Uh, and then I also just wanted to say uh, this has been, from my perspective, a really, um, a really excellent school board meeting. Uh, I don't know the metrics that you gauge that by, but um, <laughs> getting to recognize uh, some of our exceptional students and, and staff um, is really great. Um, and then also getting to hear from, from our concerned staff and getting to hear everyone's opinion um, is important. And I'm, I'm really glad that people took the time to, to talk tonight. I'm really glad that people took the time who weren't able to be here to write emails to the board. Uh, for those of you who are watching this on a stream or the recording or something, um, thank you for sharing your, your opinions with the board. We really, it really is important to us. Okay. I know. Uh, well, it's graduation season. I'm looking forward to uh, our events. We, I think, as a district, I'll, I'll always do such a great job with graduation. It's pretty cool. Um, tomorrow night is the GED graduation, which uh, is one of my favorites, actually, because uh, the folks who earn their GED, which, by the way, is really hard to do. Um, are so thrilled to be there, and um, it's just it, it's a really it's a really heartwarming event. So, um, looking forward to that, and uh, I always love that tartan. Uh, 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 what do you call it? The, uh, the the bagpipe player oh, yeah. at the tartan one. So I look forward to that too. Um, I will really miss our student representatives, like like all of you will, and and kudos to Julia for being such a great mentor to them. Um, they were probably the best that we've had <laughs> so far, as far as being so relaxed and, um, <laughs> right? And, and just um, um, informative and, and free to share their opinions about things. I, I really appreciated that a lot. They seem to feel comfortable. They are very comfortable. <laughs> they, they really were, yeah. And, um, and like Dan, I was really happy to see um, the recognition tonight for our athletes and artists and those who go to uh, DECA. Um, it's really, uh, I'm very proud of our commitment as a district to um, give uh, extracurricular opportunities to every single student in the district. I think it's really, really important and that's what uh, um, that's what makes memories for them and what really, um, you know, makes, makes uh, their, their time in uh, school uh, meaningful. Um, so, um, and then um, my, uh, uh, because of my grandchildren, I volunteered at the mini golf, uh, 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 what was it, the exhibit or whatever, at the Weaver Carnival. So there I was with the mini golf. And uh, honestly, uh, the parents in these elementary schools who turn out for these carnivals are just um, uh, amazing. And, they, and they're so generous uh, with their funding. And, um, uh, you know, those, those, and the people that plan them, I mean, kudos to them. They're, they're, uh, uh, if you can, if you can plan an elementary school carnival, you can certainly sit on this school board. I would say so. <laughs> so anyway, um, so um, um, 
thank you to all those who donated so generously of time and, and money for all our elementary school carnivals. So, thank you. Yeah, I also want to say thank you to everyone who came tonight to um, uh, either get an award or uh, express their uh, concerns. Um, I want to thank the EAs who spoke and also the nurses who spoke and raise awareness about the, um, the wages and also the health uh, benefits. So thank you for coming. I also want to thank uh, Emmett for um, his advocacy on the school board. He took the time, I, you know, he's gonna go places with that kind of voice. Um, he, he doesn't let a microphone go to waste. So I, I, liked, I like that uh, he, he was advocating for the grading policy. So um, also, I, I also attended, like Dan, I attended the uh, Rhythm of Our um, Cultures event at Tartan High School. It was very well put together. I liked the, uh, the arts on the wall, the, the food, the entertainment. It was well attended. And um, so I'm really, I'm hoping that uh, this was the first annual and that we'll have more uh, in the future. Um, and um, last but not least, congratulations to everyone who's uh, graduating, whether they're getting a GED or the Next Step program or um, uh, Tartan High School, North High. Congratulations to all the hard work that uh, everybody has done this year. And of course, we can't thank enough uh, the teachers and administrators and everybody that has um, helped us through another successful year. So look for, looking forward to next year. Thank you. Um, I want to echo how valuable it was tonight for our teachers and uh, our students, uh, staff members, um, to share uh, their voices with us. And uh, I, I think it is so valuable when we as a board are able to just listen to the different voices. And we got a lot of different voices tonight. Um, and uh, so I, I think that that give us a lot of, a lot of things to think about. Um, also, I, I'm really excited for graduations. That's my favorite time of year as a school board member. Um, it just brings me so much joy to see so many hundreds of our students, uh, whether it's at the GED program or Next Step or Tartan or North, uh, just to see the, uh, the results of their hard work paying off and um, to just share that experience with them and their family and their friends. Uh, just all the, the hope that is in the air is really inspiring. Um, I echo what everybody uh, said here as well. I, as a parent of a senior, I'm this, the end of the year is really ramping up and it's just really exciting. And um, tonight having everyone here, just the energy was mm -hmm. really exciting. Um, so I, I just really appreciate everybody that came out to, to talk in the comments and to be honored. Um, I, uh, for, for myself, I had the, um, honor of attending the con Congressional Art Competition um, in St. Paul a few weeks ago. Uh, my son had um, got a, a piece um, submitted, or um, so he was also there. But it was very exciting to see so many North pieces um, there, and such great pieces. Emmett had some pieces there as well. So it was, um, it was, it was really exciting to, to be able to do that. Um, and then tomorrow I'm attending the Award of Excellence um, that's being held by the 62 Foundation. So I'm really excited um, for that because, um, you know, I think everybody here is aware of it, but it's a nomination for graduating seniors um, in different areas of um, recognition. And so, um, so that'll be really exciting. So, yes. All right, thanks everyone. I don't wanna repeat the things that you've already said, um, but the, so I, I agree. 
with everything. Um, but the Minnesota State High School League approved boys volleyball, and that yeah. is been, yes. and that has been kind of a passion of mine for the last few years. So I was super excited about that, and super excited for those boys who can play volleyball for yeah. North and Tartan. And, um, and then the one other thing I wanted to say was that sometimes, so I've been on the school board for a while now, and over the years, you kind of wonder, you know, what's my role? You're always asking yourself. And one of the things you can do is you can get involved in, um, you know, advocacy. So this year, or for the last few years, with the legislature, we've been advocating for more money on the formula and the cross subsidy. And so it was really exciting to hear that we're getting more money on the formula and we're getting significant money towards the cross subsidy. So I think that's exciting for the districts. I don't know what it'll mean at the end. I know that everything's not perfect in the budget, but um, you know, those were our two big asks for so long that I'm super excited about that. Did you want to add something, Nancy? Uh, just just that one additional point that we uh, fought hard for, and, and that is that we won't have to spend our time and money asking for a renewal of the operating levy. Um, so apparently, as a compromise, it's a one-time deal. Yes. But still, that's really big because um, 100% of them pass, and it takes so much time and energy away from what we could be doing for our, our community. So anyway, that's a really, that was a really good thing. And that was an AMSD priority, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything else? Otherwise, I have to log back in, sorry. All right, yeah. Um, so our future board meetings are June 6, 2023. We have a work study session and then June 20th, 2023, business meeting at 6 p.m. in the District Education Center. And if there's nothing else, can I get a motion and a second to adjourn? So moved. Okay, moved by Livingston, second, second by Martins. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay. We're still ready to get. Meetings adjourned, thanks. <laughs>